In this Webflow tutorial, I'm going to answer one of my YouTube comments from Adam and Adam writes, it would be great if you made a tutorial for how to prevent background scroll when the modal is open so that when the modal is open, the BG doesn't scroll instead of the modal. Great question, Adam. Let's get straight into the tutorial. So just to, just to pick up where we last left off, I've actually done a tutorial on how to create a basic pop-up modal. So feel free to check it out. Um, again, this basic pop-up modal is not CMS, it's just static. And if you remember, we had this one and only big chungus and when the user hits show battle stats, it opens the battle stat of the one and only big chungus. Um, what I've done here in this specific case compared to my previous tutorial is I've made that background from 100% opacity to 80% so you can actually see through the background. And this is because I just want to show you that as I scroll down, you can see that the scroll actually works. So what Adam is asking is how do I make it if I understand the question correctly, Adam, apologies if I didn't. But when the user hits show battle stats, let's go ahead and take a look at it now. So as I publish the site and I go back to this main website, if I hit show battle stats, it opens the pop-up. But as I scroll down, you can see that the user can still scroll. We want to prevent this scrolling. That's what Adam is asking, I hope. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to do this, there's many, many ways. But let's go ahead and go to ChatGPT. So in ChatGPT, and I'm just being very honest here, in ChatGPT, I've already asked the question in Webflow, how do you make it so when you click a button, it'll prevent the page from scrolling. It's essentially what we're doing. Then it spits out this code. And in this code, you can actually put this in a custom embed or in the body tag. Or if you want it to affect in every single page, you can put it into a custom code inside a symbol, such as like the nav bar, so it affects all the pages. Or you can go to the project settings and add it into the custom code itself. But essentially this spits out a code and as Webflow developers, you don't really have to understand the code, but you should be able to understand the premise. So this is telling you that this is a JavaScript code. It's opening with a script tag and it's essentially saying that you can add this specific class and this specific class is listening when, when this class is, you know, when, when it's clicked, it's an event listener. And then when that happens, it's going to go ahead and change the body to hidden. Um, essentially, which prevents scrolling. So this even tells you what it does. So I'm, I can give you the tutorial on how to do this exactly, which I will, but I'm just telling you that you can actually go to ChatGPT and find the solutions yourself. And then once you imply it and it doesn't work, you can, you can go back and forth. That's what I encourage you. That's why I want to do these tutorials, not necessarily to give you the answer, but to essentially encourage you and to, to, to give you a deeper understanding, not just like, this is how you do it. Of course, you can find out how to do it, but I'm just telling you. So cool, even the code spits it out. Um, and I'll be very honest, I've already, I've already applied this code. I'll just save you the trouble. This is telling me a specific class will disable page scroll. So then I asked ChatGPT, what happens if I want another class clicked to re-enable the page scroll? Because what we wanna do is when we click show battle stats, we want the page to stop scrolling. But when we hit close pop-up, we want the page to scroll again. I'm assuming that's what you want, Adam, but that makes sense. So I've asked ChatGPT, what if I was to add another class and that would disable the, uh, re-enable the scrolling, in which they gave me this code. And I'll just be very honest, I've, I've already applied this code. I did everything it told me. And then what happened was because that button, this button show battle stats had a native Webflow interaction of opening up the pop-up, it then didn't work essentially it when the user hits battle stats the page did stop scrolling which is what we wanted but it no longer showed the pop-up so as i hit show battle stats it no longer popped this up it just stopped the page from scrolling so there was some sort of you know error there and then i went into chat gpt and i said okay maybe it's not a class thing maybe it's an id thing so i said what happens if we just change the class to id so id essentially is if you hit this button you can go to settings and you give it an id so it ID is something called like, uh, I don't know what it stands for, I should really know, maybe identifier, but ID is unique. So you can only have one ID attached to the whole website from my knowledge. Whereas if you go into a class, you can add multiple classes in a specific component. So that's the difference. Um, I tried ID as well and it still didn't work. So then I realized that the native interaction didn't open up. So I said, so I said okay, this is preventing me from native the pop-up not being able to pop up. So what can you do? And then it just told me that it updated the code. 
So essentially, I'm just explaining my thought process through ChatGPT, how I came to this conclusion. Of course, if you came for this tutorial, I recommend just skipping everything I just said previously, but here is the code. And again, just keep in mind, in websites and in coding, there are many, many, many ways to do things. This is the best analogy I can give. At the end of the day, Adam, you're trying to do this thing that you want to do, but there's many ways to do it. And what I mean by this is you're trying to make the answer equal to four, but there's many ways we can, we can arrive at four. It could be two plus two equals four. It could be eight minus four equals four. So we're just trying to find the, the simplest step, but this is just definitely one of the steps. So in this specific code, it's essentially saying when you click on a specific ID, it will then stop the background page from scrolling. And then when you click another ID, it will then re-enable the scroll. And then you also need to assign an ID to the actual modal. So what we can do is we can copy this code and then go back to Webflow. And then right here, what we can do, again, there's three ways to do it. One is you can add a custom embed right here. If you go to elements and you go to embed or just type it up in the elements right here, embed, you can go ahead and drag this right here and you go ahead and paste the code so, and then hit save. That's one way of doing it. Another way is you can go to the page right here and go to the page settings and just add it right here in the body tag. Uh, and just keep in mind, these two methods I just told you will only affect this specific page. Let's just say for whatever reason, you have a button that you want to use throughout the site to stop that background from scrolling. You want to apply it to either a, like, a component like the nav bar, which has it in every single page, or you can go to the project settings right here. Let's go to site settings. I'll just quickly show you. And you can go to custom code right here. And by putting custom code right here in the footer, this will apply it to all of the pages automatic. So that's the difference. Let's jump back into the designer. So now we're back on this basic pop-up. In this specific case, I just want it to be on this specific page. So I'm gonna paste the code right here. And again, I'll put the code in the description or on my website. But right here, what we need to do is we need to actually hit save. And then right now, we can go back to ChatGPT and it tells you exactly what to do. We need to put three IDs in order for this to work. One is to disable the scroll. So in order to do this, this show battle stats, we'll hit settings and we'll paste that ID right here. And again, you can change the ID name and then change it in the code. Then the next thing is to replace the modal ID with the modal element. So this is the pop-up element we created previously, this one right here. This right now is hidden, set to none, but if we hit flex, that's what pops up. So right now with this pop-up item, we gotta go ahead and slap the ID right here. And then according to this code, we also need one to close the button right here. So we can copy this, and then we can go ahead and go to the pop-up, and I'll just reveal it so you can see what it looks like. This button where it closes the pop-up, we can go settings and paste that ID in right there. And that's it. Now we're gonna put this back to none. Now we're just gonna publish the site and see what happens. Cool. Now let's refresh the page. Now if I hit show battle stats, you can see that it's opening up the pop-up and I can actually not scroll. You can't tell that I'm scrolling, but right now I'm actually scrolling and it's not working. You almost, you also notice one thing, which I did on purpose, is why is this pop-up now on the top left of the website? You know? Um, and the reason why is because in websites, everything is automatically placed at the top left unless you assign the position. So I did this on purpose, all right? So now if we actually go back to the code, you will notice what's happening right here is when the pop-up is clicked, it actually displays it to block right here. And again, like I mentioned, block is this specific button right here. There's different display options, block, flex, and none. Again, if I put this to block, you can tell it's putting on the top left whereas we want it to be flex in this specific case. So all we need to do is go back to that custom code, scroll all the way down and change block to flex and then hit save and then go back, republish the site and see what happens. Refresh the page, hit show battle stats. You can see the Chunga stats is shown. I'm scrolling, I cannot scroll down. As I hit close pop-up, it re-enables the scroll. You can even see the scroll bar on the right-hand side. It actually disappears. So that is how you do it, Adam. Um, again, I'm so sorry for dragging this out to 10 minutes, but I just want to explain the premise and I want to show you a way that you can, you know, understand through ChatGPT, which is a modern tool. Uh, but again, if you really just came to this tutorial to know how to do this, then I'll, I'll put in the code in the description. Uh, I just want you guys to understand the premise. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found value, please check out my website, dereksu.com.au slash value for more value. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace be with you.